Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Tavis Leaf Clover, and today we're going to be covering part two of the master portraits and how they use dynamic symmetry. So this is the last one we left off on, and we'll move on to another Holbein. We've got Holbein, Franz Halls, and then Da Vinci. So we'll finish the rest of Holbeins. This one we can see that the 5 fourth grid matches the painting ratio perfectly. So if we find a grid that matches the ratio of the painting, the next step is to try and verify that the diagonals match. So we're not concerned about what's locking in yet. We want to make sure that the diagonals within the painting match up to the diagonals of the grid because that's the key is the diagonals. So right here we can see without even moving the grid that we've got this shoulder paralleling the diagonal and then this shoulder is paralleling as well. Same with the hat up here. It's locking in and paralleling that diagonal. So we're on the right track and this is proof that Holbein used a variation of this grid. So it's not the exact grid configuration because these can be configured many different ways. Right here we have even more 5 fourth grids within the MAD to help lock in and parallel smaller elements within the composition if you need. Not saying that Holbein used this, but if we look closer, we'll see that the edge of the hair is locking in here. Right here is locking in. The eyelid, the eyebrow, the side of the face right here, top of the lip. See the shoulders locking in there again. This collar is paralleling the diagonal of the grid. The direction of his jawline, you can see that the highlight and shadow area of that beard is locking into this diagonal here. It's running in that same direction. Same with this side of the beard. You can see closer that the shoulder is paralleling that. Fingers locking in there right here too on the horizontal and then the vertical. The knuckle right here. This, this area of the fabric locking in and then paralleling. The thumb here. So many different areas locking in and paralleling for such a pretty simple portrait. Here's another one. So when you're doing portraits and you're trying to incorporate dynamic symmetry, the closer you get to the portrait, the less you'll have to work with the grid when it comes to the diagonals. So you'll have the bridge of the nose and things like that, and maybe if he's wearing a hat. But the further you come out, you'll start to have the shoulders you can work with, the diagonals, you'll have the arms to work with, and then if you go out even further, you'll have the background to work in some more diagonals. So diagonals are important when you're using the grid. You don't wanna just lock things into horizontals and verticals you want to try and incorporate these diagonals so the 5 4 grid fits this painting really well so now we have to look for the diagonals within the painting and see if they match the grid and we can see right here that these shoulders are also paralleling that diagonal same with over here paralleling that exact diagonal if we pull this down we see this line on the chin here in the shadow area of this fur he's wearing paralleling that grid the chins locking in there same with over here the bottom of this medallion the left side of the medallion locking in. This area right here on the material is paralleling and locking in there, and then it curves around. If we put the MAD on there, we'll see even more paralleling and locking in right here, paralleling, locking in the fur. We'll take a look at the hands. This thumb's paralleling the diagonal. The ring's locking in here. This finger's paralleling that diagonal. This cuff is locking in on the vertical. Let's take a look at the background fabric, because he added a lot of diagonals within this cloth. So right here is the exact diagonal of the fabric and the grid. Right here, you can see it's locking in the shadow area to the highlight it's kind of separated by that grid line there so it's paralleling that this one here you can tell it's paralleling this diagonal here this area you can see this shadow area to the highlight paralleling this diagonal and if you want you can always move the grid around to see what's paralleling or not you can see this is paralleling perfectly up here is paralleling that shadow area turn the MAD on again you can see that the hats locking in here and here locking in on this horizontal here this diagonal is paralleling move it over if you want see how it's paralleling here and here on the bottom if we move this down you can see that it's paralleling the hat there and we can use added lines so any intersection point is a place we can add more lines to it creates an eye here and here are eyes we can run a line to those if we want to use the same geometry within this rectangle here we just use the added lines from the grid and then we can see the background is locking in perfectly now to that added line turn it on and off you know it's locking in there so he just uses the geometry of this grid to help him organize the composition further this area is locking in and then we can add add another line to the bottom here. We already created this one. We're using the same exact eye here at the bottom and then an eye on the left side here and we get the same exact diagonal of that arm. So that's pretty cool. Let's move on to Franz Halls. He's got some really great brush strokes. If you look close, he's got really stylistic brush strokes. 
hatch marks. These you might see in like a Degas painting, post-impressionism, and maybe even uh, John Singer Sargent, you'll see some of this kind of stuff here, and then the broad brush strokes. So it's interesting to see how these later paintings were inspired by Franz Halls, perhaps. But this first one we can see, uh, we've got the root three MAD stacks. So this is actually two root threes stacked onto each other. And what we're looking for is the diagonals, see what is locking in. Got this side of the head locking in there, same exact diagonal. The hairline with the, the hat is locking locking in there, same exact diagonal. So we're on the right track. This grid has the same ratio as the painting ratios and the diagonals are matching up. So we were onto the right track. This diagonal here in the shadow area next to the highlight is paralleling this diagonal. Same with over here, you can see that colored variation, the blue with the orangish color is paralleling that diagonal. Right here, the color is locking in, top of the skull is locking in, the bridge of the nose right here, bottom of the tooth, the same diagonal in the skull here is found in the diagonal of the grid can add some more lines, see if they refine this further. Remember, it's not to say that you need all these lines, but if you're painting something and you have a lot of details in a certain area, you can add lines to specific areas. So we take the MAD, say you're drawing this out or you have the grid package, you can add these grids to specific areas if you want to create more details in that area. So let's turn them all on since this is a computer and we can do as many lines as we want. We're not drawing them out. Top of the skull is locking in there, the edge of the cloak, the hand, the diagonal, of the hand is exact right there. Right here, his wrist is locking in. The fingers are locking in. You can see how he weaves them on this vertical here. So one's on the left side, then the right side, and the fingernail is locking in there. The exact edge of this hand right here is coming down, locking in this vertical here. So a lot of things on that one. This one's really rough looking, this painting, really rough brush strokes in this one. We got the phi overlapping MAD. So we wanna see that it's matching the ratio of this painting perfectly. And then next we wanna see if the diagonals are matching. So right here, here we can see that diagonal of the shoulder is matching perfectly to that diagonal of the grid. Her chin's locking in perfectly there. Turn it on and off right here. Perfectly locking in there and there and the same exact diagonal. So we've got the right grid locking in here, locking in on the eyelid. The bird's locking in there. This shadow area is paralleling that diagonal. This area of the shoulder is paralleling and locking in on that diagonal there. Let me turn that on and off so you can see it. This white brush stroke here. Bottom of this is paralleling that diagonal right here. You can move it down if you need right here. Paralleling that. This shadow area of the collar is paralleling this diagonal here. And then when we add the MAD, this helps us connect the eyes of the grid. So when we do that, let's look closely at the edge of this cup here. You can see how it's drawing that vertical through the eye and then it's locking in perfectly to that cup. If you're designing your own painting and you're drawing circles, you don't have to lock everything in perfectly to the exact diagonal of the grid. Otherwise it's gonna look blocky, which could be something you're going for and it helps promote the repetition, the hidden diagonals and things like that but if you want a circle all you have to do is touch the edges you can see how he's touching the edges here and here and then over here and it creates that circle so you can use the grid to guide you use soft lines or straight edges doesn't matter let's move on to the next one so if you like this kind of stuff check out the links below i make things for artists to help them surpass their plateau and reach the master level so check that out when you can another cool one but you can see how he's matching up the diagonals of the hat to the grid you can see over here it's paralleling there locking in right here it's paralleling that diagonal exactly and same with here, paralleling that diagonal. Eyeballs locking in on that diagonal and the horizontal side of the mouth. You can see the shoulders paralleling this diagonal. If we move it over, you can see it's paralleling there, there, and there in three different ways, but it's broken up right here and then over here. We can add the MAD, see if anything's connecting right here in the center. This right here, this horizontal is locking in. The eyeballs locking into the eyelid there. The forehead and the hairline locking in. The edge of the head locking into that diagonal. If it was continuing, it would lock in perfectly. So let's look at this one. This one you can definitely see this strong diagonal here. So we'll see if our grid matches up. Our grid matches the ratio of the painting. This is the root phi MAD. And then you can see we check the diagonals and you can see that diagonal is paralleling perfectly. His chin's locking in here. Shoulders locking in there. This collar's locking into the grid right here on the left side. Bridge of the nose, nostril. This cuff right here paralleling that diagonal. If you see the edge right here, bottom edge paralleling that exact diagonal. So I can move this down. You'll see how it's exact diagonal right here. 
fingers locking in there slide this down and you'll see how it's paralleling right here same exact diagonal same with this finger paralleling that same exact diagonal right here is locking in going to add more grids just in case you use it to organize the smaller details add more lines and things nose is locking in there the eyebrows on this horizontal collar right here on the bottom side is locking in fingers right here locking in going in that same direction edge of this cloak here locking in same with right here this cloak here same with over here it's kind of just following it up here's another one Got the phi mad stacked so this is two phi rectangles stacked onto each other and we're looking for the diagonals we got the grid fitting the ratio of the painting nicely and now we're just going to look for some diagonals to match up so right here's a strong diagonal so we'll slide this over you'll see that it's paralleling right there on this side if we move this up we can see how it's paralleling up here on this side and then we move this over you see how it's paralleling right here perfectly and then even right here this edge is paralleling too so he's softening the lines to make it not look so blocky but he's paralleling the diagonals we'll seeing if anything's locking in right here is locking in this collar you can add more lines here the mad see what's locking in so now we get that left side of the hat locking in there. Got the ear locking in perfectly here, right here. You can see this hat's paralleling nicely there. Locking in on the horizontal and vertical here. And then we have added lines. So if we have a, this intersection here, use this eye. And then these eyes down here, we'll get the exact diagonals of that collar. And turn that on and off and see how the exact diagonals of that collar are being found with the added lines. Here's another portrait. Got the Phi MAD stacked again. Looking for diagonals. We've got the ratios lining up perfectly of the grid and the painting. Now we're just looking for diagonals. You can see how it's paralleling here, this diagonal here. Same with over here, paralleling that diagonal. Foreheads paralleling with the hairline, locking in on that vertical here. This is a strong diagonal, so we'll slide this over and see if it's paralleling. It's the exact same diagonal as this grid. This is locking in here. These buttons are in the same diagonal and direction as this diagonal here. Got the hand locking in on the vertical center line. This cuff right here is locking in. It's almost paralleling, but he's curved it so this left side is paralleling and then this side's locking in so if we slide this over we'll see that it's paralleling this diagonal this brush stroke is locking in on that horizontal this area is locking in on the vertical so it looks real rough and real quick and like they did this just from intuition but you can see how everything's locking in and paralleling perfectly even right here is paralleling exactly so it's pretty exciting to see how this stuff's lining up and it's unveiling some of their secrets and how they use dynamic symmetry so the side of the face is locking in there covered that here we see more of the hat locking in right here right here is paralleling shoulders are paralleling right here you can see how it's kind of like a step again paralleling 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 locking in and paralleling there locking in here on that diagonal a lot of different areas now we've got da vinci let's finish off with da vinci it's a famous painting that was recently discovered this one i found that it's using the root six overlapping mad 60. this could be a different configuration of the root six but right here in the grid package there's a mad 60 so i use this and it fits pretty well well, you can see the collar right here is paralleling the light and the shadow area are running in the same exact diagonal found in the grid we run up towards the face and the head we can see how it's locking in perfectly on this hairline here the nostril if you look close at the nostrils the same exact diagonals of these this grid you can even slide this up and show that it's the same exact thing right there see this strand of hair right here if we slide this over paralleling that same exact diagonal so some skeptics might have thought that this was all from intuition but this is all planned out especially these older guys because they were doing it for the churches selling it things like that so they were required to to incorporate sacred geometry and dynamic symmetry into the art. This is locking in here, right here. Diagonal right here is locking in. Turn that on and off. The edge of the hair right here. Turn that back on. It's locking in perfectly there. Thumbs locking in to this area. Fingers locking in. Fingers locking in here. The wrist right here where the cloth is locking in perfectly to that same exact diagonal. The wrist right here is paralleling that diagonal right here. Locking in there and then it's paralleling here. The hair right here is locking in. Right here is locking in. So let's add the MAD and and what's interesting is you'll see that the hand is kind of, you can see how it's locking in there. But let me show you something. When I move the MAD down, remember these can be configured in many different ways and he could have added smaller grids in other places. But when I slide this down, I'm gonna turn the first grid off and just slide this down. You can see how the wrist is locking in. He's 
using this zigzag formation going up the fingers. Coming up here, zigzag back and forth the hand, the knuckles across there, and then it's up towards the fingers there. But it's that same exact zigzag formation found in the grid. So I thought that was really interesting. The thumbs locking in perfectly there. Knuckles, knuckles right here. Same exact diagonal of this knuckle running up that way, this finger. See the eye, same exact shape of the eyes falling into those diagonals there. The eyebrows. That one's really cool. That one's Da Vinci. Here's another one. Got the ratios matching and then we look for the diagonals she's locking in here on that diagonal of the cheek and turn that on and off the hair the hair is locking in right here too the neck the back right here same exact diagonal of the back turn that on and off and then we can turn on major area divisions even more grids see if anything else is organized on this grid system the hair is organized on that vertical the edge of the eye right here even the eye bags kind of following the, these same exact diagonals the wardrobe she's wearing here locking in there this is locking in here this is locking in and say you're drawing this out first and then you're transferring it to the canvas it's really difficult to keep everything perfect and mathematical like a computer would this is done by humans so we've got uh, slight variations not everything's gonna be exact and perfect like a computer here's the last one we'll line up the grid on that one check the diagonals we can see that she's got a strong diagonal in her shoulders the hands this is a strong diagonal right here so if we slide this down we'll see it has exact diagonal of that cloak there slide this down to her shoulders we'll see uh, her shoulders are running in this direction here paralleling so he's got one edge here and then he adds a slight curve and then it parallels again we can move this over and see how it parallels there same with over here paralleling slight curve and then come down here and it's paralleling again you can add the MAD here you see how the shoulders locking in there and it's curving around those diagonals this animals locking in on the head the eyeball fingers locking in edge of this cloak right here on that vertical the hand of this creature the finger you can see how this horizontal coming around here it's locking in there so that's it for today guys really appreciate the support and this was a suggestion in the comments below so if you have any other artists you'd like me to dig into just leave a comment Comment below and I'll see what I can do. All right, take care.